Lucas Hood.
afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Champion Dynamics International. How are you all this afternoon? Yes? Ready to praise? Ready to worship? Yeah? Welcome to God's house. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad this morning? Let's stand to our feet this morning. We'll get glad in a moment if we're not feeling so glad right now. So I want to welcome, I think we are live. Good morning and welcome to our online viewers. We invite you to come in and just to praise and worship God with us this, mo this afternoon. I keep saying this morning. Guys, you all can start. Somebody say with me, God is great. Is he great? Has he done something for you? Do you have a reason to praise him? You have a reason to worship him? Sadiel, you have a reason to praise him? Yes? Hallelujah. With everything going on, whatever you might be facing, whatever might be challenging you in life, listen, there is something greater, and it's called God in you. There's something greater. Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Great is he that is in you than whatever is going on around you that could be frustrating, that could sometimes strip you up. There is something greater. Tell your neighbor, there is something greater. It's God in me. <laughs> it's God in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he's changing things. And because of God in me, things change. Somebody say, my, situ my circumstances are changing. My circumstances are changing. <laughs> things are getting better for me. Yes, things are, are hearing it. Somebody believes it this afternoon. Things are turning around for me. Yeah, things are getting better for me. I am walking in destiny online. I am walking in destiny. I'm walking in purpose. Come on. Let's just, let's just, let's just command our flesh this afternoon. Yeah, let's, go, let's put our hands together. Our God is greater. Your circumstances are changing. You are changing. Your mind is changing. Hallelujah. What are you turning to wine? What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Not like you, Jesus. That was just a start. That was just a start. Now we're ready to get into the room. What are you turning to? Let's lift your voices. Come on, lift your voices. You can raise your back up suddenly. I 
fights for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, and who can ever stop us? And if our God is for us, come on! And if our God is for me, who can ever stop me? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? And if my God is for me, and the spread of fear than every ungodly spirit great is he that is in you let's worship him and let's worship him let's yeah lord i worship him hallelujah lord here's our worship jesus get your hearts ready Get your hearts ready. Here's on my wish. You Lord. You Lord. You are worthy. No one worship you for me. Come on, let's lift our hands. Let's try to just give them our hearts now. Things you've done for me And you're not finished yet He's not finished with you yet No one could worship you for me Let's go from the top again You Lord, you are worthy You Lord, you are worthy yeah. and No one could worship you for me, for all the things you've done, for all the things you've done for me, and no one, and no one, and no one, and no one can worship you. Come on, for me. come on, let's tell him right now. Here is my word. Here is my word. Ah! Uh -huh. 
uplift it. All of my worship, receive my worship. All of my worship, here is my worship. All of my worship, receive my worship. Focus on him right now. Yes. Yeah, just don't be casual right now. Yeah, just give just this moment. Just focus on him right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy of my worship. You are worthy of my worship. You are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of my worship. You are worthy of my praise. Here is my worship. I find freedom when I worship. I find freedom in worship. your name Lord oh we love you forever Lord oh we love you forever oh we love you forever oh we love you forever Lord oh we love you forever Lord oh we just stay fixed on him right now just keep your eyes on him right now oh we love you forever Lord hallelujah we bless your name. Hello. Oh, you are worthy. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. You tell him. Let's lift our hands on this side. Come on, let's and let's press it. Come on, you can lift your hands so we can press it. I worship forever. The Spirit of God in you wants to worship. 
Our flesh doesn't want to worship, but the Spirit of God in us wants to worship. Yeah, Lord, so just press in. Oh, I worship forever. We worship you. Yes, Lord. Forever. We worship. Yes, Lord. Forever. Lord. in this place, just lift your hands in this place as we sing Psalm 24 that declares who we are in Christ Jesus, holy and even in his word he says, be ye holy as I am holy, you may not feel it sometimes you may not even, you may stray from it but it is who we are hallelujah, let's just declare this morning, and the psalm says who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord let him who hath clean hands, let him who hath a pure heart. We are his people. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Let him who have clean hands. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Let him with a pure heart. You can follow us. It's easy. Yes. It's easy. You can follow us as you go along. La, 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 la. Who shall ascend? Let's go. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Let him move have clean hands. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Let him with a pure heart. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Let him move has clean hands. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Let him with a pure heart. Come on, let's lift our hands in this place. Come on. Let's lift our hands. Yeah, you can command your hands. You can tell your hands, be lifted up. <laughs> even, as a, even as the word of God says, Oh, lift ye up, all ye gates. 
lift the up your everlasting doors and let the king of glory come in we can lift our hands and our hearts up we are his people let's declare that we are his people our royal priesthood we are his people our holy nation we are his Say those words with me. You make me holy. Say those words with me. You make me holy. You make me holy. Some of you don't believe it. Your spirit knows it. You make me holy. Your spirit knows it. You make me holy. You make me holy. Yeah, some of you starting to believe it now. You make you make me holy 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 You make me righteous You make me right you make me righteous You make me righteous You make me righteous You are not that thing you think you are You make me righteous This is who you are You make me You are not that thing that you think you are You make me You make me righteous, Jesus You make me righteous, Jesus you make me righteous, Jesus. You make me righteous, Jesus. Come on, believe it. You make me believe it. Say it until you believe it. Come on. You make me righteous, Jesus. You make me righteous, Jesus. You make me righteous, Jesus. Yes, Lord. One more time. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Let him who has clean hands. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Let him with a pure heart. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Let him who has clean hands. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Let him with a pure Just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. Just welcome Pastor Narayan. Hey, good day to everyone. Just give somebody a high five. Welcome somebody to church. Let's get going. Hey, good Let's do it. You can grab your seats. Good day to everyone. Hey, good day to everyone. Hope you're going great. Um, just two quick announcements from next week. Next door, we have kids ministry. So you can bring kids and stuff like that. More age-appropriate content. I do apologize for content that is not age-appropriate in this service. But next week, there's, you know, so you can bring kids, stuff like that. It's going to be awesome. And let you know, um, you're going to see just now, right? November 28th to the 2nd. We'd be announcing alive days of his presence. Five nights of revival, right? 
we're going to put it out to the champion family to register first. And then after, maybe give champion two days to register. Then after, it's going to go public. And you know when it's going to go public, it will be booked out, right? So you will want to act quickly. But hey, what an awesome first service we had. We didn't have enough time. We didn't have enough time in the first service. And you're about to, to go into the overflow of that, of overflow of God's presence, you know. So good day to everyone. Just ask your neighbor how you're going. Just ask your neighbor. Tell your neighbor hi. Yeah. Hey, y'all can take off the disco lights. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that. So good day to everyone. Hope you're having a great evening. How y'all going? Y'all going good? Y'all watching what, the Israel thing? Y'all watching what's happening? Y'all checking out the vibes? Watching how the world ready to end? Yeah? So listen, what I'm sharing with you today is, is really an end-time message. But you wouldn't think it's an end-time message, right? And prepare yourself. The first service, they, they, they got vexed at me and, you know. No, I just kidding. I don't know if they got vexed. Good morning to everyone. Good day to everyone who's joining us online too. Welcome. Yeah, so let's get going. You know, um, can I see a show of hands? How many of y'all have been in love before? Just, yeah, let's wave your hand at me if you've been in love before. Yeah, your, your hand went up or you putting on your jacket? What? Your hand was going up? You were putting on your jacket. Eh? I saw you did like that. Wrong type to put on your jacket. <laughs> you know? Um, we made for love, amen? We made for love. Oh, just say that. I, I've been made for love. Yeah. We made for love. We're made for God's love. You know, you're made for God. If you don't have God in your life, you feel empty. But we take that awesome love that God has for us and we share it with someone in a marriage which is so beautiful. Amen? The Bible says the two become what? One. And I want to show you that in the Word of God. So I want to jump right into the Word of God. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Watch it there. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Here what it says, Know ye not that your members, your bodies, are members of Christ? Shall I take part of Jesus, or shall I take the members of Christ, and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. Watch the next verse. What Know ye not that he that is joined to a harlot is one body? For the two shall be made what? One flesh. Watch the next verse. For he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. I want to know some par parallel. One minute he's saying, when you're joined to the Lord, you're one spirit. When you're joined to a human, you're one body. One spirit, one body, right? I think... Um, I know it this way, but they were correcting me in the first service. Anybody's ever heard of Siamese twins? Siamese twins. They were telling me that's not the correct term. What's the correct term? I think they were wrong or no. They're telling me it's conjoined twins. Is that it? Con conjoined. Is it how it's called? I know it as Siamese twins. What, what is Siamese twins, Salas? Or Siamese is the first? Or they were from Siam. So they call them Siamese twins. All right. Well, Siamese twins. You know, sometimes you see these two babies, they join together by the head. Anybody's ever seen that? And they carry them to do a surgery to separate them. And the whole world celebrates that they separated Siamese twins. Any, you know, they do this microsurgery and they cut them away. And first of all, they have to see if they're viable because sometimes it's two babies, but they're sharing one heart or they have the same lungs and they can't really separate them. Have you ever experienced a tabanka before? Yeah, can I just wave at me if you've experienced a tabanka before? Just wave, wave at me if you're going through one right now. Just, <laughs> yeah. But if you've experienced a tabanka before, the Bible says that there is no such thing as really casual sex. There's no such thing as that. There's none. You know, like we say, you know, just, I just had sex and, you know, I just move on. And there's no such thing as that. The two become what? One. And this is why God designed sex for marriage. Because marriage protects you. Amen? Marriage is designed by God. In fact, the Bible calls marriage one man and one woman for life. 
How many are ready for that? How many are ready for that? How many of you could say amen? How many of you could say amen? One man, one woman for life. How many are ready? Alberto, what are you saying, my brother? <laughs> yeah, one man, one woman for life. For life. I, let me try it again. How many of you could say amen? I sense a weakness here. You know, like, like, people say, boy, I'm not ready for that. Either. One man and one woman for life. You, talk to me. How do you feel about that? Strong? Feel strong? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Next time, feel no strength here in this church. Either. One more time. One man, one woman for life. All right. Yeah. Possible. Possible. You know, and this is why God designed sex for marriage. Because when you try to take the two Siamese twins apart, oh, you could get damage. And when two people have sex out of marriage and you try to separate them, they could be damaged. But what about if you've been with five people before you get married? Wouldn't that be a mess? And you know, when, when you have two people together, can any doctor separate them? Can you take any doctor on the side of the road and say, separate these two twins? Or these twins? Is one twin? Two people? Twin. Yeah, they can't. You have to get a specialist doctor. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So the Bible says, you all know marriage, right? The Bible says, what God has joined together, let no man, what? Try to put us under. And so if you are having physical intimacy with somebody who's not your husband or your wife, listen, you're going to be joined up together with them. And sometimes you can experience intimacy with someone and you didn't even have sex with them. It means you just what? You're connected to them. And when it's pulled apart, you feel like everything inside of you is mashed up. It's like you've been torn apart. You have a tobacco. And, and let me tell you, if you keep on doing that, you're going to have a problem having relationships. So you're going to find that there is something deep inside of you who's been, that's been damaged. And therefore, there's an inability inside of you to really connect with people. You all know long before there was sin, before there was a pastor, before there was a church, before Adam and Eve had done wrong, before there was, listen, the Ten Commandments, God said something. It's not good that man should be what? Alone. And so therefore, being alone is like the worst thing in the world. You know what I mean? Being alone is horrible. We are designed to be connected. We are designed for connection. We are designed. We are social beings. You're designed to be part of a community. You're designed to be part of a family. Listen, in church, you get to love each other in church. You get to love God. And you get to love your spouse. Who could say amen to that? You know? And your spouse, your husband, your wife is like a part of you. You know, the two become what? One. How many of you got what I just said, right? How many? Now, just tell anybody, now you know. Just tell anybody that, now you know. Now you know, but the devil knows that too. The devil knows it. You know it, and the devil knows it. So where you think you're just going to have casual sex, the devil is saying, uh-huh, no way. You're going to be joined to that person. And so on your wedding night... You get married, but you're joined to five other people. So you're going to need to, to break those ungodly soul ties in your life. You might be sitting down here in church and you have a soul tie to someone else. You listen, you're not ready to get married until you break those soul ties. Just tell your neighbor, break those soul ties. Yeah. You're not really ready to get married to married until you break soul ties. In fact, look at this verse in the Bible. Give me Proverbs chapter 5 verse 3. Watch it. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 3. Here it says, For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil. Or just tell your neighbor, it's sweet, it's sweet, it's sweet. Look at, look at the terms it's using. Sweeter than a honeycomb. 
And here, look at what it's saying. My brother, look what it's saying, right? Smoother than oil, right? When you see a honeycomb, what do you think? You know? When somebody see a honeycomb dripping, what do you think? Is that what you think, sweet? No, you think I can eat that, right? You think I can taste that, not so? Yeah. And you can have trouble in life. I don't know how it works for a woman, but I can tell you how it works for a man, right? Thank God. How many of you could say praise the Lord for that? Some men could tell you how it works for a woman. I, I don't know that, right? I can only give you the male perspective. But you, the Bible says don't look at wine while it's red. And the same way, you can, you can look at a woman and say, my God, she is beautiful. And, you know, everything feels great in the beginning. Everything feels sweet in the beginning. The lips of a strange woman drops as a honeycomb. So just, just imagine that dripping, her lips dripping. And women do that today. You know, you all know women do that today. Some of y'all watching me like, oh, what are you saying? You know, what do women do today? They use, um, what do they use? Lip gloss. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. <laughs> they use lip gloss and they say, look, look at me. And it, you know, you do like a man. You can't just, yeah. yeah. They can look at me and they come in and their lips shining. You know, it's like shining. You know? And it's sweet. It's sweet at the beginning. You know how much people get, get into relationships? It's sweet at the beginning. But you know the expression, what's sweet in goat mouth? <laughs> yeah. You know the expression? Why you want me to say the expression? Yeah, yeah. Young people know the expression, right? You know the expression? What is the expression? What's sweet in goat mouth? I'm not... I'm not. Oh, Crystal says... <laughs> What's sweet in goat mouth? So in the bam bam, right? Yeah? So, and that's crystal, crystal. That's scriptural. It's sweet in the goat mouth. Watch the next verse. Watch the next verse. Verse 4. The, the bam bam, <laughs> the end, the end is bitter. Are you seeing that? So it's very scriptural. <laughs> it's sweet in the goat mouth, but it's sour in the bam bam. So the Bible is saying, it starts off sweet on the phone. Hey baby, yeah baby, I'm thinking about you, you know. You just, you know, you know, you pour on, pour on that voice, you know. You know, men is pour on a voice. You all know that. That is not his voice. Eh? That is, let me tell you. That is not, you, you watch Guardian of the Galaxies? They put on the God voice. Yeah, baby, I just, you know, and I'll reach home and I've just been, been thinking about you and, you know, just, and my thoughts just r ran on you and I said I'll give you a call. When they finish talk to you, they say, Mommy, I <laughs> have That is not a real voice. So the Bible says, the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. It starts off sweet, but it's sour. And watch the next verse. Her feet go down to what? Her feet go down to what? Death. And her steps take hold of what? Hell. By it saying it goes down to death, it means when you go into a relationship and it's broken, there is a disconnection. There is a separation. It feels like death. You know, it feels like a, a separation. And then it says it goes down to hell. And you know the Bible says hell has its torments. And you might be here today and there's a relationship has led you to brokenness and torment. And God doesn't want that in our lives. You know, you know God wants marriage in our lives. He does not want. Now, what am I preaching today? What am I preaching today? Is an end time message. And I might get you vexed before I get you free. Amen? But it's an end time message. This is an end time message I'm preaching to you. But I want you to know that God has made us for connection. He's made us for intimacy. He's made us for family. He's made us for marriage. And we know this. And God knows this. And the devil knows this. 
And so the devil knows there's something inside of you deep down that wants connection. And so what the devil will do, he'll want you to connect. You'd, listen, every hot spot you're logging on to, you know, you're, you're, you're stealing Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, and you, you know you're in, with one person, and then after there's a brokenness inside of you, you're going to mash up yourself, you're going to damage yourself, you're going to hurt yourself. God, you know, can I see the show of hands? How many of you all have experienced tobacco before? Just wave your hand at me. Yeah, God never meant for you to experience the banker. Your own stubbornness made you experience the banker. Yeah, God, God wants you to never go through the banker in your life. Or say that with me, in the name of Jesus, from today on, I will never go through the banker in my life. Amen. Come on, give Jesus a hand of praise like you believe it. You, you see how they're clapping? Yeah, no conviction. But listen, you go through to banker when you, you make your choices not based of the Holy Spirit. You know, you make your choices in the flesh. You decide to do something in the flesh. Let me show you another verse. Give me this verse, Luke chapter 4, verse 32. Yeah, here it says, And they were astonished at Jesus' doctrine and the power of Jesus' word. Watch the next verse. And in the synagogue, there was a man with an unclean devil. Now, that word unclean means somebody who's been defiled, perhaps through sexual sin or like pornography or lust or perversion. So there was a man who was in church and he was bound with an unclean spirit. And the spirit cried out with a loud voice. Watch the next verse. Leave us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? We know you are holy. We know you are holy. You are the holy one and we are the unclean ones. You are the holy one. And you are the un we you are the holy one and we are the unclean ones. The Bible says there are some heavenly beings who look at the glory of God and night and day they cease not, but for all eternity to say, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. You know what I find is very interesting? Those beings don't watch God and say, Money, money, money. When you come to many churches today, you swear the angels are saying, money, money, money. Or, you know, even what is interesting, they don't even say love, love, love. But they say what? Holy, holy, holy. Or say to me, God is holy. When you hear the word holy, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Don't lie, yeah? Just tell me. When you hear the word holy, first thing comes to your mind? Pure. Set apart. White. <laughs> First thing comes to your mind. Sorry? Nothing? Nothing comes to mind. <laughs> First thing comes to your mind. Uncommon. These are real church people. Boy. You know? It's, it's easy to understand the word holy by understanding what it's not. The word holy means something that is not common. It's uncommon. How many of y'all have a, a, a cup at home that's holy. When people come and they pour in drinks for them, you pour in out things. You say, listen, listen, don't let them use that cup. That's my cup. That's holy. Or somebody's sitting down, you say, no, 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 no. Don't sit down on that chair. That's my husband's special chair. Only he sits down on that recliner. That's holy. Well, God says that you are holy or say that with me i am holy it means we are uncommon we are peculiar we are chosen we are special we are set apart for god and the same way god wants you to see him as holy hey we're going online boy i'll call alberto let me call justin i'll call celeste but when we use the name god we treat his name as it's what special 
We never use his name in what? Vain. So God is a holy God. It means he's not ordinary. He's not one of your friends. There is no one like God. He is holy. You see, when you think of holy, Christians tend to think about a long dress. No, no. But when God thinks about holy, he thinks relationship. You are set apart for me. When, when God thinks of the word holy, he's saying, you are mine. Marriage is a holy thing. When you get married, your, your husband is not everybody. Girl, or your wife is not everybody. Your husband is not everybody. <laughs> Boy, not girl. It means you are mine. That's what holy is. So God said to me, I am holy. So that means I belong to God. I'm set apart for God. I'm uncommon for God. Now, I want you to listen to me carefully. Listen to this carefully. What are we? It's an end time message, right? Listen carefully. God's people will go into the promised land. Just raise me just a tad. God's people, just a little. God's people will go into the promised land. Enemy after enemy after enemy came against them. And they could not defeat them. And there was a king. His name was Balak. When he saw king after king after king defeated, he said, what could I do? So he paid a prophet, a man who heard from God. But even though he was a man who heard from God, he was a man who liked money. And he paid a man called Balaam to curse God's people. And Balaam went on a mountain and he looked at God's people and he said, they are blessed. And, and the man said, did I pay you money to curse them and you bless them? He said, no, all right, let's go to another mountain. He went on another mountain, he looked at them and he said, they are blessed forever. He said, listen, don't, don't even open your mouth. And they went on another mountain. And he said, they're blessed and the Messiah shall come. And no trouble is in their life. No misfortune. They're blessed, 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 blessed. Or say to me, I'm blessed. Who God blesses, no man can curse. Amen? So you don't ever have to worry about in work. Well, you know, they went by the Obiak man and they gave the Obiak man money to curse me. And they paid. Listen, they could not be cursed and they did not know about the blood of Jesus Christ. What makes you think you could be cursed? You're a child of God. Or say to me, I cannot be cursed. So, no enemy came against Israel. No Obiak man worked. But listen to this carefully. Balaam so liked money. When he realized nothing worked, when he was leaving, he told the Moabites, you can't curse them, but you can defile them. Send in Moabite women. And he defiled Israel. And they worshipped idols. He said, God loves them so much. God will never turn from them. God will never abandon them. God will never forsake them. But hear what you can try to do. Get them to abandon God. Get them to forsake God. And so, the Moabites sent in women. And the men slept with the women. And the men worshipped their God, gods and they defiled them. The enemy knows he cannot defeat you, he cannot curse you, but he will like to make you unclean. And when you feel unclean, you become, feel, you come in a place in your life where you're not a vessel fit for the master's use. When you're unclean in your life, the devil is coming against your destiny, your purpose, your call, the ministry, the mission that God has for you. So the devil wants to make you unclean so that God cannot use you. The Bible says if you purge yourself from these things, you'll be a vessel fit for the master's use. And in that moment, when God wants to use you, he wants, the devil wants you to feel unworthy, guilty, condemned, and shame so that God will not be able to use you. And so the devil wants to defile you. And you got to get every unclean spirit out of your life. Also say it with me, holy. 
So the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see God. I want to expose something, reveal something, show you something that for many people is hidden. I don't think I've heard it preached in a church before. I can't think of hearing it preached in a church before. But I, I do apologize. I'm about to hit many of you at your very core. Because I'm about to expose a demon that many people have made an alignment with. But if you break free from this demon, or oh, you'll experience the power of God like never before in your life. So stay with me. I want you to know we're going somewhere. We're not just preaching words. We're not just in cute things. But this is something that's going to be relevant for your life. Relevant for your life right now. And perhaps we'd expose a demonic power that's been causing your life to be in bondage for quite a while. So that you can step into the freedom and the power of God. So that God could use you and you can make full proof of your ministry. And the gifts of God in your life could be used for maximum purpose. Amen? This is where we're going. So stay with me, right? So I want to go to Judges chapter 6 verse 25. Throw it up for me. Judges chapter 6 verse 25. Throw it up for me. Hear what he says. Judges 6 verse 25. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it says. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord had said to him, I think the him here is Gideon. I have to go and check. The Lord, I might be wrong, right? The Lord said to him, take your father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal, or Baal, Baal, that your father had, cut down the grove that is besides it. And so Israel begin to worship this being called Baal or Baal, right? And now watch out this next verse, 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 16. Watch it here, 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 16. And after they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, so they abandoned God and made molten images, even two calves, and they made a grove and worship all the host of heaven, and they worship Baal. You see, these were two gods, two fallen demonic beings, two false gods that trouble Israel, Baal and Asherah. Baal and Asherah. So they will have Baal and they'll put a tall, limbless pole next to Baal statue. And that will be Asherah. These two demonic beings always affected Israel. You know why it always affected Israel? Because Asherah, right, which often was like the wife, the mother, the daughter, was always connected to Baal in some kind of weird way, right? And the Jews, well, the people of that day would believe that when they both slept together, it caused the rain to fall. And they'll worship these gods for the fertility of their soil. And and it's like us saying to you guys, the champion, hey, guys, there's a house next door, but outside the house, they're just the most beautiful women in the world, and they're dressing promiscuous, and it's a house of lust, sexual perversion. And we say to every, all the men, women in here, do not go into that house. How many of y'all know if that house existed next door, we may have some challenges, not so? We may have some people going into the house, not so? We may have to tell people. You might have to save some people, right? It will be a challenge. How many of you know, know that will be like a real battle? And in fact, Ashra was called the God that made men women and women men. Listen to me. Ashra was called the God that made men women and women men. It was the God that was responsible for gender change. So, I don't know if you remember, anytime they worshipped those gods, the men would castrate themselves. So, they were eunuchs that would worship, right? And Baal, if you're worshipping Baal, he will require you give up your child as a sacrifice. These are the spirits over the world now. And these are the spirits in America now. 
These are the spirits that you're seeing in TV now. They are demonic beings for thousands of years ago, but they're still alive. They are spiritual beings. And when you see people marching in the streets of America, they are marching for abortion and stuff like that. They don't know it, but it's a spirit of bail in them. And when you see people marching in America for, for um, homosexual and, and lesbianism, and tra- they don't know it, but it's a spirit of Ashra in them. It's a demonic spirit that is affecting their lives. All over the world now, you're seeing people marching in support of the Palestinians and Hamas. How many of y'all, y'all know that? You're seeing people marching for that, right? But listen, listen, they don't understand that in the last days, there'll be three frogs that will come out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and its false prophet, and these frogs will enter people and get the whole world to hate the Jewish people. So there are some things I would like to say, but I can't say it because I'm, alive, I'm live now and YouTube has told me I have just a few more strikes and they will want to ban us, right? They don't want you to talk about certain things online. They want to control content, control media. They want to control the world and what's going on in the world. So they've told us we can't, don't talk about certain things or we will deal with you all and stuff like that and three strikes and you're out so so some topics we can only talk about in the morning service some topics we could talk. imagine that they have all kind of crazy things on youtube but they don't want you to talk about certain things what a crazy thing is that but i want you to know these spirits the spirit of baal and the spirit of ashra is over the world and we have trinidad and tobago is a strong hole for these spirits. We have something in Trinidad called Carnival. It is one of the, listen, when we started off deliverance ministry in this church, you know what was the shocking thing to us? Perhaps the top three demons we count encountered, one of the top three demons we encountered was one called Bacchus. And Bacchus is the same Baal, same Astra type spirit. Bacchus is the spirit behind Bacchanal. You know, carnival time, they say it's Bacchanal time, right? Bacchus was the worship of the Greek god of wine and theater and, and arts. And that's what you get in carnival, the theater. It's the same spirit. And in fact, Rome at the time, the senate of Rome at the time, banned worship to Bacchus because it led to drunkenness, revelry, and nakedness. Well, in Trinidad today, what does Bacchus lead to in Trinidad? Drunkenness, revelry, and nakedness. So that's the culture. And I want you to understand those spirits. So they are spirits. Spirits, global spirits affecting the world. And if you're not aware of it, some of us just like to go along with the world. Just like to flow with the world. Whatever the world says is cool, is cool. You just parrot the narrative that is coming on the world. Because you don't want to offend, right? You don't want to be offensive. You don't want people to get angry at you. You don't want people to hate you. So you speak what the world says so that you'll have peace with the world. And you, so you say the things like, you know, what's wrong with people just finding love? And you should be able to love who you want to love. Well, God disagrees with you. Your maker and the creator of the world, in the beginning, he made Adam and Eve. And he made them what? Male and female. And he said the two shall become one. He said if a man would lie with another man the way he lies with a woman, that is an abomination. So I want you to understand these two spirits Oh, so say to me, Baal, what do you all want to say, Baal or Baal? I think both of them are accurate pronunciations, right? I think I like Baal song, Baal. Which one are you? Yeah, let's go with Baal. Oh, say to me, Baal, Ashra, and say this word with me, defile. So this is what this demon wants you to be. Hooked on porn, sexual perversion, and the being wants you to be 
always before God saying, I'm sorry, forgive me. God, I repent. God, I'll try hard. I'm fed up. God, I can't take it no more. But I'll try, God. And then you try again. And then next two more weeks, three weeks, God, I'm sorry again. I repent, God. And I'll try again. And then next three weeks, I'm sorry, God. I'll try again. And so he always wants you to be a cycle of defilement in your life. You understand what I'm saying? A cycle of shame, of guilt, of regret, of defilement in your life. That's that spirit. Amen? And today we're going to talk to you about how to break that spirit from your life. Amen? Oh, come on, give Jesus a hand of praise if you're excited about that. <laughs> Let me show you a little more. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Here it says, Now the spirit speaketh expressly, that in the last days or the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. And they will give heed to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Watch the next verse. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, their conscience said as with a hot iron, right? They're no longer sensitive. They're no longer convicted. They, they can sin without feeling bad. Their consciences have been said. Watch the next verse. And forbidden to marry. You see, demons today don't want covenant. Demons today don't want you to get married. Demons want you to have sex. They want you to be seduced. But they don't want you to get married married. You see, because marriage, marriage is, is the way God says the marriage bed is undefiled. You see, God doesn't want you to be defiled. He doesn't want you to defile your body, but the devil wants the bed to be defiled. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm talking about? So I'm talking about satanic strategy and the strategy of evil spirits to bring defilement in your life. So the devil is, doesn't want you to get married because he wants you to be defiled. But the Bible says the marriage bed is undefiled. Right? And I'm going to talk about some more things, but we're streaming live and stuff. So that kind of, I think we should stop right there. Right? Um, you know sometimes people say when you're married, well when you're married you can do anything. Once you're in the marital bed. No, that's nonsense. That is nonsense. You can defile your spouse by bringing in demons. What you see on TV, you try to bring that in your marital bed and you bring demonic power in your home. Right? So that's nonsense. Right? So if anybody thinks that kind of stuff, that's nonsense. Give me Revelation chapter 2 verse 13. Throw it up for me. Let's go. Now this is God speaking now. Watch this. Eh? This is God speaking to the church. Now, I want you to understand this carefully. This is the book of Revelation. And God was about to tell the church about the end times, the antichrist, the false prophet, all the things in the end times. But before he deal with the end times, he wanted to speak to his people. He wanted to speak to his church. And I would recommend you read it. What you read in Revelation chapter 2 and 3 is very important for your life to prepare you for the last days. And he's given us insight. Hear what he says. I know thy works. And where you dwell, Satan's seat is. And look at how good this church was. You hold fast to my name. And you have not denied the faith. Even when they were killing you. And Antipas, my faithful martyr, martyr was slain among you where satan dwells you did not abandon me you did not deny the faith you did not turn from christ they were threatening your lives and they they martyred antipas right but you did not abandon the faith and god is saluting them for that but watch the next verse i have a few things against you do you see how you could be serving God? You could be loving God. You could be coming to church. But God says, I have a few things about, against you. I have a few issues with you. You know, there are a few issues. He said, I have some things against you because you have there those that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who Balak, who taught Balak to create a what? 
stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. So Balaam, who's, who's talking here? Whose words are these? Whose words are these? Anybody? Who's talking here? Whose words are these? Y'all not sure? Whose words? These are Jesus' words. If you were reading the Bible, these words are in red. These are the exact words of Jesus to his church. And he says to them, you have there Balaam, who's taught Balak to cause God's people to commit adultery, commit fornication, and to commit idolatry. You know, there are two things the Bible tells you to flee. What is the two things the Bible tells you to flee? Idolatry and what? Fornication. Do you know the Bible tells you flee fornication and the Bible also tells you flee idolatry? You all, you all know that, right? You know, so, you know, there's not something you fight against. It's something you what? Run from. Amen? And, you know, sometimes over the years, people get upset at champion. They tell my wife. They get upset. They say, why Kerwin is always talking about fornication? Why you have to come to church and always hear about fornication, fornication? Why you don't talk about something else? Do you know Jesus spoke to the seven churches? And you know what Jesus talked to the church about? Fornication. And he talked to them about idolatry. Now, what Baal and Asra did, they linked their worship to sexual promiscuity. So just think, don't think too much. Just think about you going to a church with the most handsome man, the most beautiful girl, and part of their ritual was, sex, was sexual sins. And it was all kind of perversion, homosexuality, lesbianism, whatever. And, and listen, and the men of Israel, when they saw those women, the woman, the woman in the Moabites was different from the Jewish woman. The woman, the Moabite woman, was different from the Jewish woman. Do you know in some places the women are different from the Trini woman? You know? Who's saying true there? <laughs> the, the woman, listen, they have some women who don't play. They're in the gym 24-7. Their physique, top, 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 top. Listen, the, when they step out, you're dead. Yeah. And then they are the Trini women who can come in normal. So. <laughs> And so they are the normal Jewish women. Watch it. Picture the church, right? I'll show you this, right? Everything I'm saying, even though you might think I'm talking stupidness, everything I'm saying is for a purpose. And you'll see it just now. So the, 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 the Israelite women come in with their nice little locks and they, their dress and they, they go in, oh, it's beautiful. And they go in, ching, ching. You know, they, they're dancing Jewish women. Sha da da da. Israel, Israel, and the men with the women going, Israel, Israel, and then some more white women pass. Yeah, they skirt tight. They here, yeah. watch me. Eyelashes long. They they bind the shapers. They listen. They ain't stepping out without their shapers. Everything up, you know, and and they walk. And, and the man was with the, going, Israel. <laughs> and when he see that woman, he said, Israel. <laughs> he forget the Israelite girl. And he gone after the Moabite. And in one day, what did the Bible say in Corinthians? I can't remember the exact number. Was it 2,400 or 24,000? died in one day. God slaughtered Israel in one day. Let me show you a little more. Let me show you a little more. Watch this. Give me Revelation 2 verse 20. You ready? You have to make a choice today. You already decide today. This is men and women. Eh? You'll see what I mean. Another church. Jesus, right? Or say to me, Jesus. Another church. Here. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you. Give me the NIV version. NIV version. Watch this. Watch this. Nevertheless, I have this against you. 
you tolerate that woman or say to me that woman Jezebel now Jezebel is long dead so why Jesus bringing back Jezebel when Jezebel dead it's a spirit and it's when Jesus it could be in a man or it could be in a woman but the spirit is a woman you heard me? Jesus said, whatever Jesus said, you know, there are some people, they're so intelligent. When Jesus talk, they say, no, but let me tell you something. No, no. When Jesus talk, you hush your mouth, partner, right? Just shut up. When Jesus talk, just hush. Put your finger in your thumb. Put your finger in your thumb. <laughs> put your finger in your thumb. <laughs> when Jesus talk, put your thumb in your mouth, suck it. And say, yes, 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 yes. Jesus said, that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet. She is self-appointed. Right? She does not operate with God's authority. She operates with her own authority. All of that is important. I'll show you why. She calls herself a prophet. She by her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality, eating food sacrificed to idols. Watch your next. So what does she cause? What does she cause? Idolatry and sex. You say, but I'm not bowing to no statue. No, but you're worshiping things. Covetousness is idolatry. Watch it. Never, I have given her time to what? Turn from a sexual perversion. I've given her time to turn from her immorality, but she is not what? Willing. Right? Watch the next verse. I will cast her in a bed of suffering. I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely. Unless they repent of her ways. So you realize now Jezebel has what? Ways. Or say to me, ways. Or tell anybody about way, ways. Yeah, Jezebel has ways, right? Watch your next verse. What's your next verse? I will strike her children dead. So Jezebel has what? Children. Children are those who subscribe to her ways. That's the children, right? I will strike her dead and then all the churches will know. I see the human heart. All the churches will know. I search the hearts and the minds, and I would repay everyone according to their deeds. Wow. Wow. Give me now 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30. Hold the verse. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30. Who is Jezebel? She is a worshiper of Baal and Ashra. She is the embodiment of the spirit. She inside of Jezebel was the full power of Baal and the full power of Ashra was inside of her. When Jesus uses the name Jezebel, he's referring to an unseen force that is affecting the world. Jesus is warning the church that as we come down to the last days, Jezebel's power will be strong. He's telling the church, you cannot tolerate Jezebel. He's warning the church that in the last days, Jezebel will have a grip on the world. And he's telling us as his people, we cannot tolerate Jezebel. I'll show you a little more. Let's watch a verse now. Watch a verse. NIV, NIV, NIV. Let's go. Here it says, And Jehu went to Jezreel. When Jezebel heard that Jehu was coming to kill her, Jehu was a king. He was the man that killed Jezebel. When Jezebel heard that Jehu was coming, what did she do? What did she do? She wasn't one going, hey, Israel, Israel. She wasn't. She was, oh, she come out. 
She put on what? Makeup. She arranged her hair. She put on she clothes. And she looked out the window. And Jehu was coming to kill her like a madman. Eh? He was, listen, he was like a madman. And as he was running and he looked at her in the window, he said, no. No, trouble. Trouble. If I go up there to fight that woman, she did not say, send for my soldiers. Send for my fighters. Send for the men of war. She didn't do that. She turned to her makeup, her beauty, her outward. That's what she turned to. Jezebel is a woman who thinks she can get a man by seduction. Jezebel is a woman that uses seduction to get a man. Watch the next verse. Watch the next verse. Verse 31. Let's go. And Jehu entered the gate. And she said, have you come in peace, you Zimri? You murdered your master? You come in peace? Were you coming here to do, Je Jehu? Look at the next verse. And he, he looked up at the window and he called out, who is on my side? Who? And two to three eunuchs looked down at him. He was smart enough to know, don't go mess with that woman. It took some men who are God, who, not God, it took some men who were missing some key ingredients to deal with Jezebel. Elijah could not deal with Jezebel. Elisha could not deal with Jezebel. It took Jehu, the spirit of Jehu, to deal with Jezebel. And two, three or three eunuchs looked down at him. Watch what he said next verse. Throw her down. So they threw her down and her blood splattered on the wall and the horses trampled her. Or just say to me, throw down Jezebel. Just say to me, throw down Jezebel. Now give me First Peter chapter 3. Verse 3. Are you ready for this now? First Peter chapter 3 verse 3. Don't be concerned about Jezebel. Don't be like Jezebel. Don't be concerned about outward beauty, fancy hairstyles, expensive clothes, and beautiful jewelry. He's not saying you can't wear beautiful jewelry, you can't wear fancy hairstyles. Or, you see, but Jezebel, she was about seduction. These are the words of her master. You tolerate the woman, Jezebel, that seduces my people to commit fornication. These are the words of the master. You tolerate. These are the end time words of the master to the church. You tolerate Jezebel who uses her beauty, her eye makeup, her hair, her clothes to seduce my servants. And hear what he says. Hear what he says. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, and beautiful clothes. That's the whole world. That's the spirit of the world. Watch the next verse. You should clothe yourselves instead with the what? Beauty that comes from where? Within. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. And that's so precious to God. Watch the next verse. This is how the holy woman, or say it with me, holy, holy, holy. Not the defiled woman, holy. Or say it to me again, holy. This is how the holy woman made themselves beautiful. They put their trust, not in that. They didn't put their trust in, oh gosh, I'll keep my man. I'll lose my man, you know. I'll keep my man. I can't lose him. I can't lose him. I can't lose him. They put their trust in God. And what did they do? Accept the authority of their husband. What's your next verse? For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband Abraham and called him what? Call him her master. You are, you are what? Her daughters. 
You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands would do. In the end times, you are going to have to decide if you're a daughter of Jezebel or you're a daughter of Sarah. Listen to me carefully. You're going to have to decide if you're a daughter of Jezebel or your daughter of Sarah. Listen to me, don't go be following Kim Kardashian. You follow Sarah. Yeah. So, so watch this. This is you with the, with the guy in the church. Israel, Israel. Hey, yeah, yeah, Israel. And you're beautiful. But when Jezebel go in the man, Jezebel can be in a man. He say, why you can't dress like her? You have a man who wants you to be Jezebel. You have a man, Jezebel, because he going into the Baal and the Asra temple. And he see the woman in the temple. So he wants you to be a woman in that temple. But what fellowship has a temple of God with a temple of devils? We cannot join God's temple to the temple of a harlot. So you marry a man who wants you to be a harlot. You marry a man who wants the spirit of Jezebel to be in you. You can watch somebody immediately and know if they're trusting in Jezebel or they're trusting in Sarah. When, you, when it's all about your curves and your shape and your this and your that and you come out and it's like, whoa. Over the years, we've had situations like that. I remember we had this a beautiful girl coming to church. She paralyzed all the men. She paralyzed them. Then one man came to me and said, Pastor, I dreamt her last night. I had a pornographic dream with her. I said, whoa. Then another brother came to me and said, Pastor, I dreamt her last night. I said, really? And then another brother came and said, I dreamt her last night. I said, oh, is that so? And then she came for me. I can't talk about it now because we're streaming live. But in the first service, we shared a little bit about it. And I tell Kyle, I said, Kyle, there's a demon in this girl. We're going to deal with it, all right? Because you got you to gotta find the eunuchs to help you. <laughs> at, a, at that time, Kyle was, you know, we didn't know what was going on with Kyle. You know, he wasn't married. We thought, you know, he thought, I say, I find you the eunuch. I know. <laughs> so Kyle and I go on to deal with the girl. I catch her unawares. She wasn't expecting it. Service had ended. And I just said, hey, can I pray for you? And she said, okay. And as I laid hands on her, she fell long dead. And she was dead for a good while. One hour later, she was dead. We were outside Lyman. They said, where the girl is praying for her? She said, she's dead in church right now. Go watch her. She dead. The demon disconnected her from her body that I would not be able to address him. So when I tried to, the girl was gone. Let me tell you something. You can have Jezebel affecting your life. The fashion industry is controlled now by Jezebel. The clothing industry is controlled by Jezebel. Listen, Jezebel wants you to be on TikTok, Instagram, Netflix, hooked on porn, sexual perversion, and masturbation. That's what Jezebel wants you to do. And you love the Lord, but you're bound. You can't break free. You can't serve the Lord because you're defiled. Jezebel wants to defile you. Let me tell you some things about Jezebel. Right? The, the morning service, the church, they got their homework. They're going home and read Kings. Right? Chapter 9, chapter 8, chapter 10. They're about to go home and read about Jezebel and write down all the things about Jezebel. To identify the spirit. I remember the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of what? Baal 
Asra, Astarte, Bacchus, all those things represent Jezebel. Now, 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 now. The Bible says, you daughters of Sarah, clothe yourself in what? Inward beauty. And that's how holy women made themselves beautiful. Holy women made themselves beautiful by clothing themselves with what? The inward beauty of a what? Quiet and gentle what? Spirit. And they accepted the authority of their husbands. Jezebel controlled her husband. Sarah called her husband master. A controlling woman is a sign of Jezebel. So you meet somebody who's very controlling, it's a sign of Jezebel. Did you see the verse? Did you read it? Sarah accepted the authority of her husband. But what if my husband's a fool? What if my husband is stupid? The Bible says that you should trust in the Lord Right? And the Bible says that even by silence, not by rebelling against your husband, you can win your husband to the Lord. But what if my husband wants to hit me and do crazy things to me? Well, of course, you leave the marriage. You always have a what? Being a wife is a choice. So if you know, if this isn't working out, you can leave. Right? So let me tell you something. Christians seem to think that divorce is not an option. No, divorce is an option. God hates divorce, but God hates slap too. And divorce is an option in a marriage. You can get divorced. The day your spouse realizes you can divorce their tail, well then they might ship up and change the way they move. Not so? The day you say, well... Well, you can, we married these Christians, but that do us part. Well, you fool, look at you, you stupid. You know, you could think, but then you realize, I out. Okay, sorry. Then you change your tune when you realize that, wow, we have a choice in this matter. Also say to me, daughters of Jezebel, daughters of Sarah. What is one sign of a daughter of Jezebel? She wants, oh, somebody said rebellion, yeah. She wants to control her husband. What is a sign of a daughter of Sarah? She accepts the authority of her husband and calls him Lord. Not God. Eh? Lord means master. Let me just, uh, this is where the first service, the woman got angry. And a couple of women put up their hand like if they were in Hunger Games and started to do so. <laughs> so let me talk to the men a, a, a second, right? The women can tune out. Let me just talk to the men. You find there are a lot of women out there that will refer to a husband as Lord. You find there are women out there, they're submissive or they're ready to fight back and answer back. Say, so let's go. <laughs> Wait, what, who's that? Who's talking? Somebody dare talk? <laughs> what do you say, my brother? Now, you, you smoke? <laughs> I heard somebody say 99%. <laughs> it's a rare thing to find a daughter of Sarah. But you find it's easy to find women out there who put on the hot pants, pants pull up the breasts out, lift the hair, and they're out there in the mall. You find that common? Oh, a dime a dozen, not so? Jezebel's daughter. And what kind of woman the man want? Does the man want the woman to go in Shah Israel? Israel? <laughs> Does the man want the woman who dress properly going? Ah, 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 ah. No, the man want the woman who what? Hot. Not so? So Jezebel in the man. Where the man telling you, like, come every time you're going out, you had a dress. You had a dress like you're in church. You live a little bit. Don't study cooing, you know. We're not here with you now, you know. 
Girl, we going out. You know why he seen he seen more bites all over the place in movie tongue. They biting him up more. You see, the name is more bites. Yeah, he going more bites all over the place, right? And he with you, you going. He with you, you walk at him going Israel, Israel. <laughs> You are inside of all cute Israel. And he just watching them women, they're watching you. So the eye, women today don't watch you, so no, they watch you. Their eye, they have all kind of eyes. They have several eyes. Yeah. When they put on their makeup, it's like they just look at you and it's good. Cool. Get a man shambari back. Cool. Yeah, the, they just look at you and you have to start a praying tongues. You know, before you just, you know, you have a nice, like, how are you today? How are you? Sister, how are you? Brother, it's great. Now when they say, how are you? They do so. <laughs> and they learn to do their eyes a kind of way. And when they watch you, it's like, wow. Yeah. So you're going to decide if you're going to sit in the window like Jezebel or if you will sit like Sarah, this is going to be one of the things that Jesus says in the end times. I will, I will judge Jezebel's children and the whole world will know I was looking at your heart. That's what God is saying. And all the men were looking at your outward, but all the churches will know that I was looking at your heart. You say, but pastor, you, what, what, what's wrong with that? You're judging me. No, no, I'm not judging you, friend. I deal with what's in your what? Heart. That's what I'm dealing with. What's in your heart? God's going to look at what's in your heart. And we want to be daughters of Sarah. Hey, look at another thing about Jezebel, right? Jezebel turns men into women and women into men. When a man marries Jezebel, he becomes a woman. Yeah. He can no longer exercise what? Authority in his home. He's now a silent man. You see a couple walk in and you say, hey, tell me something about what your life. And the woman says, yes, I shall tell you. And the man will decide doing so. There was a man married to a woman, a pastor. And every time he would go to church, she will argue with him. She'll fight with him. She'll argue with him. She'll say, yeah. And he say, gosh, I'm going to church. And when he go in church to preach, his spirit will be upset because he's arguing with his wife in the car. And he stand up and preach and he bring that message and the people will feel abused. So he went to a bishop and he say, you know what? Every time I go into church to preach on a Sunday morning, my wife arguing with me. So the bishop tell him, you have a choice. Either you stop preaching or hand your wife over to Satan. He said, what? He said, yeah, you have a choice. Either you stop preaching or your wife is in rebellion to you. You're going to have to give her over to the enemy. So he was like, what? I'm not going to do So he finished. The guy said he saw the man a couple of years later. He said, so what happened? What happened with your marriage? He said, boy, marriage going great. My marriage blessed. It going so great. You know what he said? I stopped preaching and all my problems came to an end. And he said, the very week I stopped preaching, my wife became a preacher. He said, so I travel around the world now supporting her. She is the preacher now. I'm her assistant. He said, but our marriage is great. Why do you think the Bible said women ought to be silent? And if they will learn anything, let them learn from their husband. What? What kind of chauvinistic? What is that? What is that? What is that? Women should be silent. Why God said such a thing? You don't understand. Let me explain it to you. Paul is saying that because in the beginning, God created Adam. And then from Adam, he created Eve. Eve came out of Adam. The man, the woman came out of the man. And then eventually men came out of women through childbirth. And the devil came, right? The devil came to attack Adam and Eve. They were together. 
And you know what happened? Adam stayed silent and Eve spoke to the devil. So God was rebuking Adam and also addressing Eve when he said, the woman should be silent and the man should speak. Do you understand the context of it? So when you read in the Bible, keep on reading. You'll see it goes right back to the beginning and then says, women shall be saved in their childbirth. Then you'll understand, women, he's talking about bringing forth the Messiah, man coming out of woman. That's what he said. Man coming out of woman would save the whole world. So, understand what I'm saying is this. That Jezebel turns women into men. And men into women. You see this? I am woman. Hear me roar. Jezebel is behind a lot of that. The feminizing of the male and women becoming manly, it's Jezebel. And so you want to recognize that. And lastly, Jezebel will directly attack you. So you can just feel like you're under attack. Because you went somewhere where Jezebel is at. at. You know, sometimes as a pastor, I'm preaching. Sometimes people come to church. One, I remember time, anyway, forget that. Sometimes people come to church, and I know they can't stay in this church. Their wife will not allow it. It will be a matter of time. They have to leave. I told my wife that once. A brother came to me. I said, I already know, bro. He said, Kevin, can I talk to you? I said, I already know. I already know what's happening. I saw it already. You see, sometimes it's a spirit. Okay. Let me summarize and let's get some solutions, right? Let me summarize. I think the summary of the entire message could be brought down to this. You're going to decide if you're going to be a child of Sarah or a child of Jezebel. This message is not just for women. This message is for men. You know, whenever I, I tell my wife something, but it's, you know, she says, men have women so. That's what my wife says. She's wrong though, you know. But that's what my job as a husband to do. So tell her she's wrong. It's not men have women so. It's demons have men and women so. It's the devil have them so. Right? You see her foot went up high there? You all saw just now? Her foot went up high. Did you, anybody saw that? Her foot went up high. She was talking with her foot. Yeah. Her foot just went up high, high, high. Because she was, she went up, she did so. Yeah. It wasn't Israel at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're ready to deal with Jezebel? Let me just show you how Jezebel works. Jezebel might be in some of our wardrobes right now. Jezebel might be with some of us in the mall. When we go out in the mall, we just put on the little hot pants. And we, we just want to be cute for the day. You know, I just want to be, yeah. Jezebel might be with some of you all, you, you know, in your outfits, your attire, your, what you watch. You've been watching Learn Nakedness on Netflix, Instagram. You've been in pornography. You've been watching things on TikTok. You've been in the night watching stuff. You've been in sexual perversion. You've been in masturbation. You've been in all that kind of stuff. Jezebel working with you. How many of you all were in a previous relationship? You had sex. You weren't married. This Jezebel playing the fool with you. Some of you, yeah, and what she wants to do. God's not against you, right? You're doing strippiness. God still loves you, right? But Jezebel wants to defile you. She wants to disconnect you from your destiny disconnect you from your ministry she comes to end ministries yeah she ended elijah's ministry elisha was smart he walked in the mantle of elijah so god did not send elisha to deal with jezebel he said anoint jehu let him deal with jezebel when elijah made an appearance thousands of years later in john the baptist John the Baptist came on the scene with the spirit of Elijah. Jezebel ro rose up and she behead John the Baptist. She ended the ministry of John the Baptist. She ended the ministry of Elijah. This is not no petty little demon. This demon goes after nations and kings and leaders. She attacks leaders. She seduces God's servants. 
She beheads them. She, she goes after their destiny and ministry. And there are some of us here right now. We'll be used by God, serving God in a much greater way. But sexual perversion, sin, pornography has been keeping us back. Some of us here, every time we're about to make a commitment to go further in God, to go deeper in God, to give God our all, you get into sexual sins. So you're ready to deal with it? You're ready to deal with it? How many are ready to deal with it? Uh, let's see how to deal with Jezebel, right? So now the message this morning is entitled The Spirit of Jehu, right? Don't get frightened. That didn't mean the whole message coming, right? But the title of the message this morning is The Spirit of Jehu. We prayed for the first service that there'll be an impartation of the Spirit of Jehu. We're going to pray in this service that there's going to be an impartation of the Spirit of Jehu. Jehu is the man to take down Jezebel. So you, you have homework, right? To go take a blank sheet of paper, read Jezebel, and take the points from her, and note it, and note it, write it down. She controlled her husband, write it down. Write down all the things that Jezebel did, right? And so that, give, me, give me now 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 1. Let's go. So we're wrapping up here with this. Watch it. And meanwhile, Elisha, the prophet, summoned a member of the group of prophets. He says, get ready to travel. Take your olive oil with you and go to Ramoth Gilead. Watch the next verse. And find there Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi. Call him into a private room away from his friends. Watch the next verse. Pour oil on his head and say to him, this is what the Lord says. I anoint you king over Israel. Open the door and run for your life. How many of y'all could be a prophet? Right? See, when a prophet have an assignment from God, it's not games. God give him an assignment. He said, when you finish, give the word, run. Run for your life. Right? So you could imagine him coming and saying, hey, can I see you? Hey. Come with me, please. He pours the oil on him and says, you are king over Israel. And he opens the door and he starts to run. Right? So now, move me along to verse 11 now. So Jehu went back with, to line with the partners, his fellow officers. And one of them asked him, what a madman who ran out of that door? The madman who went running. What you wanted, boy? Is everything all right? And Jehu replied, you know how man does Babylon. The madman, you're just talking stupidness. Don't take him on. That's what Jehu said. Don't take him on. You know he's just a madman. Watch the next verse. You are hiding something. Tell us, Jehu. And Jehu told them, he said unto me, this is what the Lord says. You are king over Israel. Watch the next verse. And they quickly spread out their cloaks on the bare steps, on the ground. And they blow the ram horn. And they say, Jehu is king. For the prophet. Prophets install kings. A prophet will loose you into your destiny. Will loose you into your mantle. Will help you discover your kingly mantle. That's what a prophet will do. Will reveal something that was hidden inside of you. That you will step into a mantle that God has given you. So this prophet sent by Elisha on an assignment... Release an anointing on Jehu when he poured the oil. When he poured the oil, a kingly anointing came on Jehu. Now move me to verse 16 now. You ready for the anointing of Jehu? You ready? Hold up, hold up. Holy verse, holy verse, holy verse. Are you ready for the anointing of Jehu? Are you ready for it? When the man anointed Jehu, what did God tell him to do when he finished anointing him? Run. And what did they call him after? A madman. You ready for this? Alright, watch the verse. And Jehu got on his chariot and rode to Jezreel to find King Joram who was lying there wounded and King Ahaziah of Judah was there. He had gone to visit him. Watch the next verse. And the watchman of the tower of Jezreel, Jezreel saw Jehu and his company approaching. He shouted to them. He shouted to Joram, sorry. I see a company of troops coming. 
Send out a rider and ask him if they come in peace. Watch the next verse. So the horseman went out to meet Jehu and said to him, The king wants to know if you come in peace. And Jehu replied, What do I know about peace? Or what do you know about peace? Fall in behind me. He told the man who came, Join my army. Join my army. What do you know about peace? Join my army. Watch. And the watchman of the tower called out to the king, The messenger has met them, but he's not returning. Watch the next verse. And the king sent out a second horseman. And he rode out to them and said, The king wants to know if you come in peace. And again Jehu answered, What do you know about peace? Fall in behind me. Watch the next verse. And the watchman exclaimed, The messengers have met him and he's not returning either. It must be Jehu, son of Nimshi. For there's a spirit of a madman on him. He is driving like a madman. The instructions of the prophet imparted something into Jehu. And now he too began to move like a madman. So the watchman exclaimed, the messenger met him, but he is not returning either. It must be Jehu, son of Nimshi, for he is driving like a madman. Watch the next verse. Quick, get my chariot, King Joram commanded. And then the king of Israel and the king of Judah, Ahaziah, rode out with their chariots to meet Jehu. And they met him on the plot of land that Jezebel, you got to read the story, Naboth's plot of land. Jezebel did evil to get that plot of land for her husband Ahab. When you go home, you read the story, how significant that was. Watch the next verse. And Joram de demanded... Do you come in peace, Jehu? And Jehu replied, How can there be peace as long as there is idolatry and witchcraft of your mother Jezebel all around us? How can there be peace when Jezebel is in the house? The Bible says, Jesus said, I have something against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel. You see, sometimes people come into the house... And they're all cute, like the girl who was coming. She was all cute. All the fellas started to dream about her in church. One brother reached out to me and said, Pastor, I had a pornographic dream with her. Another person said, Pastor, I dreamt her. Another person, and she had little strategies, you know. Nothing overt, nothing. She would, you know, bend down to pick up something and all that will be chess. You'll see everything. She had little moves, you know. She used to do little moves and, you know, little, little subtle things. And listen... Nobody wants to confront it. Nobody. And you know they leave me. The man. They leave me a man. Big woman like Dawn. And Crystal. And Onika. Big hardback woman. When the men dying. The men dying. Eh? The men saying oh gosh. Oh gosh. And when we go to the woman of God, we say, um, our sister is mashing us up here. What's wrong with Olya? Olya weaker. What's wrong with Olya, man? Olya weak. Olya have problems. Oh gosh, look at men now, boy. Look at this man. And they want to tolerate it. But this is where the woman supposed to put their arms around their sister in love and say, sister, how are you going? You know, not everybody. Sometimes people come to church for the first time. Sometimes people have been living their lives. Sometimes people on the street. Sometimes people in prostitution. Sometimes people don't have clothes. They don't have things to wear. So they wear whatever they want to wear to come to church. That's cool, right? We're not dealing with that. We're dealing with a what? A spirit. And so sometimes people in the church 10, 15 years, and they have that spirit on them. And then all of a sudden, the mark is boss. And you hear the pastor was sleeping with this girl. And the pastor was with this one. And the pastor was with that one. Yeah? Let me tell you, them things don't happen just so, no? That happened because you tolerate Jezebel. Let me tell you something. I, I, I bought you, you all sitting around next to each other. You know, what's, I don't know what's the nature. What's in the. Say, mom, your mom look like you're. you're, you're 
your, your girlfriend or something. See, see, it's good to ask questions. Your mom look like your sister, or your, you know? Wow, give his mother a round of applause. <laughs> you see the, the power of asking questions? Let me, let me go down in the back here. There's a couple in the back, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, things ended, things still going strong. How you going? You all good? Right? So, my... <laughs> <laughs> so, if you see a girl after church, right, she come up to your guy and she's saying, how are you going? You know, women have less subtle things they do, you know? They less subtle things they rest. It's my wife, just in case you're wondering, right? I'm just not touching the woman in church. Just, right. The woman come up after church, she say, how are you going? I miss you. Whoa, man here, yeah, man or woman? I'm, you real miss me, girl. I miss you. I ain't see you. Oh, no, no. You fly up right in that girl face. Excuse me? You miss somewhere else today, yeah? Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. That's when you have, that's the time to do. That's the time to say, hey. Yeah. Not here today. Yeah. Or say to me, don't tolerate Jezebel. So you got to get Jezzy out of your wardrobe. Yeah, that's when you begin to, you really tolerate Jezebel. Some people, it's Jezzy now. They're so close now. You got to get Jezzy out of your walk. You're walking as a woman, hear what you do. Listen, listen what you do as a woman. You, you just walk. Try it. Just walk. You know? You don't walk like a snake. Yeah. You don't. You just walk. Yeah, just walk normal. You don't have to be throwing your hips all over the place when you're walking. You want to take a picture? Just take out your phone. You say, we're posing for pictures. Yeah. You don't have to stick your bottom up in the air and turn into a Playboy bunny to take a picture. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that with your mouth and stick your bottom up in the air to take a picture. Just smile, just smile. You can pause, but you don't have to turn into a porn star to take a picture. Yeah, you don't have to grease up yourself and go in the camera and go. You don't have to seduce the world. You don't have to seduce the world. That's not your strength. <laughs> Listen to me. That's not your strength. Your strength is you are rare. You are a daughter of Abraham. You are a daughter of Sarah. Yeah. Jesse is common. Daughters of Sarah are rare. You are a beautiful. When you step into church... Oh, there should be beauty all around you. Your hair is beautiful, your clothes are beautiful, but your inside beauty. And when you stand up and the guy's talking to you and he says, Are you in church? He says, Yes, I was. And you're quiet and you're gentle. And he look at you and say, Wow, she was different. He wouldn't be able to get you off his mind. Yeah. But if you have to dress hot, to get the guy, that guy has Jezebel in him. Yeah. And let me tell you something, they have hotter than you. I know you feel hotter than a chula. I know you feel as a scorpion pepper. But listen, yeah, you all know scorpion? <laughs> we won't talk about it, but scorpion is kill you with the tail. Eh? But let's not go there. But let's know it's true. <laughs> yeah. I know you're hotter than a scorpion pepper. But listen, they have hotter peppers out there. Yeah, the man will go away and he'll find a California, what's it called? California Reaper pepper. They have hotter peppers than scorpion. I know in Trinidad we feel we hot. But worldwide they have hotter peppers than scorpion. And you say, but what happened? But you are a daughter. So the spirit of Jehu, the spirit of Jehu is the spirit that does not tolerate Jezebel. Get Jezebel out of your home. 
Get Jezebel out of your life. Get Jezebel out of your social media. Delete those photos that you're seductive in social media. Delete them. You don't need their history. That history is under the blood of the Lamb. You are a new creation in Christ. You don't have to be hot to trot. You say, but the man won't like me. Like, listen, if he doesn't like you like a child of God, then he's not worthy of you. So get Jezebel out of your life. Get Jezebel out of, listen, your wardrobe. Get Jezebel out of your social media. And you're going to have to be a madman. You're going to have to ride like a madman. You're going to have to have a kind of crazy thing because the whole world dressing in hot pants. But you're going to have to walk a different path. Don't be afraid of the highway of holiness to God. Don't be afraid of walking in holiness to God. Maybe not everyone wants to be holy, but you are a holy people. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see God. And so I want to encourage you to desire holiness in your life. Could you stand to your feet? Let's pray. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, come on, just lift your hands to God right where you are and let's pray. I don't know if everything we pray is going to be applicable to your life. But I know nothing that we pray will hurt you. I know it will be relevant. So I want you to pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, my mind, my spirit, my body belongs to you, Lord. I am the temple of the living God. Father, anywhere in my life that I've been under the influence or control of Baal, of Ashra, of Jezebel, in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce it. I repent now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, anywhere in my life, I gave myself over to sexual perversion and immorality. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent, O oh God. I disconnect, Father. Father, in Jesus' name, give me the spirit of Jehu, Lord. Give me the spirit where I will not tolerate sexual sins in my life. Heavenly Father, I ask now that any ungodly soul ties, that you break it now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Anywhere I'm connected to anyone that's not my spouse in the name of Jesus Christ I break it now I cancel it now in Jesus name or oh, just a little softer with the keyboard and just pray with me say Heavenly Father I choose now to forgive Lord any person that defiled me Lord Oh, Father, I forgive them now, Lord. I send away the hurt, the brokenness, the pain. And Father, right now, disconnect me from them. In Jesus' name. And now, Almighty God, I repent. Forgive me for looking at another human being as an object, Lord. Forgive me for defiling your sons and daughters with my eyes, Lord. Forgive me for devaluing another human being and making them feel less than who you say they are. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, wash me now from every defilement. Cleanse me now with the blood of Jesus Christ. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
I declare that I am a child of Abraham and Sarah that I am a child of God and now I stand in the authority of a child of God and I command in the name of Jesus Jezebel and all her works get out of my life go in Jesus name in the authority of the name of Jesus get out of my life and the life of my family now in Jesus name get out now in Jesus mighty name Heavenly Father I submit my entire life to you to clothe me in true beauty and holiness Lord Father change my heart change my mind I want to be pure I want to be a virgin with oil in my lamps Heavenly Father right now in the name of Jesus make me holy come on just lift your hands to God I want you to receive this now so pray with me say Heavenly Father clothe me now in the mantle of Jehu mighty God give me a no tolerance for sexual sin it is written that fornication let it not be named once among you as become a children of God so now with my hands lifted up I receive now from the Spirit of God an impartation of the mantle of Jehu the mantle to destroy Jezebel in my life and the life of my church in the life of my family in Jesus name I break every agreement with any image with any website with any demonic pattern with pornography with unclean thoughts now in the name of Jesus I command unclean spirits go out come out out now in Jesus name oh come on give Jesus a mighty hand of praise give Jesus a mighty hand of praise Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a mighty hand of prayer. Talking, yeah, we check, we see it. You know, if you want to test, you know, read our lips. Mike, you know, are, you, are you all hearing us now? I yeah, think, yeah, they're here, they should be hearing <laughs> us now. But good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon, everyone. Anya, Zane, Marcia, all the people who are streaming online. We're gonna be praying for anything that you guys desire to be Lord to do in your life, yeah. so whether it be healing, anything mm -hmm. tangible, like you know, maybe our jobs, so anything that you all, you all want. Amen. We're gonna be praying for. So you let yeah you're sending your prayer request, but we just wanna continue to pray along the yeah, lines. Definitely. As we, we left off. So maybe you wanna lead us in that area. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So just close your eyes, just lift your hands as I pray, as we continue. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, today as we put on the mantle of Jehu, Father. Father, we release now every spirit of Jezebel yes, from our Lord. lives in the mighty name of, Jesus, the name of Christ, Jesus Christ Father we speak and we seek 
today separation from every tide every way that jezebel may have affected our lives in the mighty name of jesus christ lord father we speak freedom we speak righteousness we speak holiness upon our lives father as today father we put on the mantle of jehu in the mighty name of jesus christ father that when we have on this mantle, Father, we will yeah, spot him from a spot Jezebel from a mile away, Father. And we will be, we'll be able to say to Jezebel to go from our lives. Father, help us to open our mouths, Father, to speak and to declare and to rebuke every way that Jezebel would have affected our lives. So, Father, we declare freedom today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father. And thank you, Lord Jesus for your strength father thank you for the mantle of jehu upon us father today to deal with every way that the enemy will come and try and trick us father yes. in the mighty name we pray lord thank you for thank doing you it father lord. thank you lord thank you for doing also, it as we pray and I, I encourage you guys to receive to love any kind of rebellion anything that you find inside of you that is not of god just just allow it to leave yeah. your life you yeah. know because like he's saying you know jezebel seduction is different things and it's come with it it's almost like a rebellion, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. could correct you, nobody and just allow the Lord if you do find those things in your life to remove any hint of it from your life. Amen. You know, because Amen. the Bible is clear on something. My sheep hear my voice Amen. and they follow. So it's important to be have a spirit like, like almost like a sheep out. Somebody willing to mm -hmm. listen, yeah. somebody willing to be, be led by the spirit of the Lord, because really and truly it's not people. It's really and truly uh, the if it is you have an issue like that, it'd be very even hard for even God to talk yeah, to true. you and you listen to him. You know what I mean? Uh, so we encourage you guys to allow the Holy Spirit to touch your life right now. And as we pray, we're going to just seek the Lord. But anybody who desires prayer for anything, you let us know in yeah. the comment section. Yeah. We're going to pray about the situation, right? So, you know, let us pray yeah. and ask sure. the Lord to help anything. We're not going to be very long, so you let us know. Like 20 minutes, we'll try to wrap up like 3 o'clock. Yeah. So let us know. Heavenly Father, thank yes, you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For your Holy Spirit here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we, Father, just, we just, thank welcome you. just welcome your presence. Not just for us, Lord, but for your people, Lord. Okay, Father. Everyone who's listening online, we just invite the kingdom of heaven into your homes. We invite the Holy Spirit into your homes right now. Father, thank you. Yes, Father. You desire to. Speak to everyone, Lord Jesus. We say, if anyone desire, ask of you anything, Lord, and you will do it, Lord Jesus. So we come to you, seeking you, asking for your help, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. As, as, we, Lord. as we began to pray, I felt like someone who has been having migraine headaches. Like if the Lord would have taken his hand and place it on your head and that migraine would have just left i believe that you're feeling whoever is that person mm -hmm. you're feeling like somewhat something touched your head mm -hmm. and, I and i'm just feeling god's peace upon your head i believe that headache is finished i believe that headache Thank is you. going now i just felt like the lord took his hand and placed it on your head Thank you, Lord. Because you've been experiencing bad migraine headaches. And I believe that it's gone. Whoever is that person, I, I just declare complete healing upon your head. I declare yes, the peace of Christ upon your head, upon your body, yes, upon your mind. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for doing it, Father. Amen, amen, amen. You know, is there anybody in the past time or recently or something like that? You do painting, like, you know, not necessary, but we've got to be professional, but, you know, it's like something you just do, you know. Let me know online, like, you do, like, painting. I just saw, like, a, on a table, like, a bunch of paint. So, if there's somebody like that, let me know in the comment section. Um, like, you just go through the comments, they say, you want to pray for Judy, and I will pray for Anya. It's Judy saying how I like prayer for my, my friend's mom. Parbati. I think you pray for Parbati already? I could be wrong. I don't know. Tomorrow, yeah. her results come in for cancer. Yeah, so, exactly. we just pray about our situation. And you can go down to Anya. Let me scroll down. Let me see. Anya, like, prayer to break breakthrough. I've gotten a proof for mortgage, but there seems to be 
a block from closing the application given my landlord notice this was supposed to be closed already and the landlord is now pressuring me to do I let we just pray for favor upon your life mm -hmm. and that's and, and yeah any issue going on we pray that the Lord would grant you know we pray not that the, no matter I say it's not the Lord but we pray that you access it mm -hmm. because God always wants to show us favor mm -hmm. we, it, there's one thing is for sure Bible is clear God doesn't change Definitely. You know, he loves us, he's for us, so we never have to worry about that. So let's pray that some divine grace come upon her, you know, in the landlord, whatever the situation is, and they move on. You know, that nothing block your life in any kind of area. Amen. So anybody who have a migraine, anybody who, I just so like paint. So if it means, if that means something to somebody, let me know. If whether recently is painting or something like that, yeah. I just saw paint on a table. So if there's anybody like that that makes sense to them, let me know. So you want to you wanna pray by the time? And yeah, so Judy, I'm just going to pray for poverty now. Heavenly Father, we lift Thank up poverty Lord. today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we declare right now your divine healing. We declare, Father, every disease, every way that that cancer may have gone into her bloodstream, Father. We declare right now complete healing to her blood, complete healing to her body, Lord. That every way that it has affected poverty we release now your healing upon her body in the mighty yes, name of Lord. jesus christ Father. and we declare that when she goes for those results Father, Father that even right now you're changing the scenarios you're changing the situation Father, in her life in the mighty name of jesus christ Father. Father, that she will be completely healed lord jesus for there's nothing you can't do father and we declare right now lord victory in this situation for poverty in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you for touching her body thank you for healing her today lord thank you for changing and turning around the situation in her life in the mighty name we pray amen 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 so i'm gonna pray to you on yeah i just i just want to receive you know the grace of god upon your life heavenly father we thank you for anya and father we thank you for your mercy and a grace, you say, come before you, your throne, Lord, and receive, Lord. Yes, Father. So, Father, we just lift up your daughter, and we just receive. And I encourage you to just receive, and hear that. The favor, the grace of God upon your life, that, Father, no matter what's going on, that there'll be peace right now in this situation, Lord. Yes, Lord. We know, Lord Jesus, you see, you'd never see your children begging for bread, Lord. So, you know, I, we believe, Lord, we to trust in you and we would never be in a situation where we need to be just be desperate in life Lord. for you say you give us a peace that this world cannot give so even if something may seem when you're outward it's not working out we know we have a peace that comes lord jesus and it makes opportunities when one door closes another opens lord jesus so we never have to worry we never have to be burdened lord jesus but even in, if you feel burdened, you say, cast our cares and our burdens on you, Lord. We really believe, Lord, that you are the way, the truth, and life, Lord. So, Jesus, we just place this situation into your hands. And we just receive the peace of Christ upon Anya's life. Let's yeah, receive Lord. the peace of Christ right now in your life. Yes. And the favor of Christ on your life. That all of our answers, that we are complete in you, Lord Jesus. We just declare, Lord Jesus, that this situation with the mortgage will go through. Everything that's yes, blocking it, Lord Jesus, we, we, rebuke, we, rebuke, it we rebuke it right now, Lord Jesus. We and we declare in this situation, now. regardless of what happens, Lord, your daughter will come out on top, Lord Jesus. You, that she would prosper, Lord. We declare it over her life, Lord. Yes, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Yeah, Indira. So asking again, headache, somebody with paint. Well, migraine specifically, right? Somebody who they seen with something with paint. And let me know. Um, you scroll back up. I just want to see the next prayer. Somebody asked, right? can you pray for breakthrough with finances? I will pray to Indira. So let's just pray. Indira, let's receive. Heavenly Father, even as we're praying just now. Father, we just pray for new opportunities, Lord. Yes, Indira, Lord. Lord Jesus. Father, every way might be limiting her, Lord. Father, we just declare, Lord Jesus, new opportunities and new season in our life. That, Father, she would earn and she would receive more income in her life, yeah, Lord, Lord Jesus. More finances, Lord. Father, we just declare your favor upon our life. But, Father, you took Peter. 
And in his last catch, he catch more than they can ever catch, Lord Jesus. So you are the Lord of abundance, Lord. So Father, we just declare over our life that she would receive, she'd walk in abundance in this area of her life, Lord Jesus. We declare for a breakthrough right now, Lord. You would speak to her. We declare everything that might be blocking her, Lord. We just expose the lies of the enemy. And Father, we declare boldness, yes, Lord. faith. Yes, Father. In there, I just feel like you could be creative. So whatever idea you have, whatever thing, you talk to the Lord and allow the Lord to bless your life. Yes, Father. You know, sometimes we look for other sources, but sometimes the Bible, here the Bible say He give us the power to get well. So it means Amen. that we could also have the ability to do something different. Start our little hustle inside. Do something and you start mm -hmm. to realize, whoa, I could do more. Yeah. Amen. So, Father, we just bless our life right now, Lord. We clear yes, for Father. financial breakthrough in our life, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Hey, Pearl, Sammy. Hope you're going good, Pearl. So, let's just continue. Anybody else want to pray for anything else? Let us know. Just ask him again, right? Somebody, do you want pain? Any, Somebody with a migraine. Anyone has pain behind their neck? Their neck. I was actually now and I feel that. Yeah. That, you know, like right here, like a yeah. muscle or something, like right. a pull or something, let me yeah. know. Anyone with pain yeah, in the neck? Like, sick, as can say, like by the muscle, like a muscle here, yeah, pain. You, yeah, I felt that. Who's that oh, person? Jesus. Jesus. It's not by my Holy Spirit, we just thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Judy, Is Judy. there somebody listening online? Their, their eyes kind of just like jump sometimes. You know, you just look and your eyes just kind of like jump, like tremble. I don't know as you would. Let me know. So Judy, just lift your, just lift your hands. Heavenly Father, we lift up Judy right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's put her hand on your neck area judy Thank father you, we jesus. release now your fire to come upon judy's neck upon her back lord we yeah, release lord. in the mighty name of jesus christ your healing power upon her body now that every pain every pulling yeah lord every way that the neck has been tense and in pain we rebuke it now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord. And we you, declare complete healing. Judy, I'm as a prayer, I'm I'm feeling that pain leaving. Thank right? I'm Spirit. feeling the pain leaving. Yeah, wow. I believe you're feeling a difference in your neck, Judy. Yeah, so Father, we declare right now yes, complete yes, yes, healing yes, upon yes, Judy's yes, neck. We declare yes, victory yes, now over her butt, yes, over her neck, over her back, over her head. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit. And Father, we lift up Pearl today in the mighty yeah. name of Jesus Christ. And we rebuke yeah. every pain, every infirmity, every way that her body may have been feeling weak. Father, we yeah. speak strength to Pearl's body now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Father, I release now your healing power upon Pearl's body. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, Lord Jesus. Every pain, go. Now, in the mighty in the name, name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So, Father, I thank you for completely healing your daughter's body. For, Father, I thank you that she'll thank be able to move, she'll be able to walk, she'll be able to do things without pain now, in the mighty name of Jesus she Christ. Go on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Amen. Judy. Amen. If you continue to pray as you're praying, I look at uh, Pearl asked for pain in our body. For pain in our body yeah, too. well, I just... I just oh, okay, for, okay, okay, sorry. So, Pearl, let me know how you're feeling. Because, you see, we, Judy saying the pain gone. Let me know if the, how you're going in your body. Night, night talk. What's your name? I, I don't know, right? I just saw like an eye twitching. So I don't know if it's eye or eyelid. You know what I mean? It's not you know not here or there with me in the context of. I just felt yeah. like somebody is with your eye, like that kind of. So if it is you, maybe you can let me know and we, name and we will pray for you. Whatever is that situation that it goes from your your body, you know. If that is the case. So yes, you can let us know also to how you're feeling, Paul. Well, it's Ross. So is, is that the case? Like it's something to do with your eye? I know it's a little delay. Jared is going to pray for you, but it's going to leave your body. Hey, just trust the Lord. If that is the case. You saw like somebody, like an eye, you know, like an issue. I don't know what it is, what it is exactly. Hallelujah. I see you can you can so you want. 
All right, so just pray, just receive. That's what you know, slowly you guys go through. Just pray like any nerve, any yeah. kind of thing that affects And also Indira said, her daughter as well. Isabella. So just pray for Yeah, Isabella. Thank, Thank you, Lord Heavenly Jesus. Father, we, we just lift up Ross and Isabella today in the mighty name of yes, Jesus so. Christ, Father. Yes, she is. And Father, so we so speak to every nerve in their eyes. Father, that's causing their eyes to jump, to have an effect that's not normal, Father. We release now healing upon their eyes. Yes, Father, so. we speak to every nerve now and we say that it will cease. Father, and we declare right now that Thank this you, issue is going to stop now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father. Father, as I put my hands over my eye, Father, let your hands touch them now. Father, I release Thank now you. your healing power over their eyes, Father, that this twitching, that this nerve issue, that it will go, that it will cease today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hello. Wow. Touch them, Lord. Touch them now. From the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we declare right now that they will gradually feel a tangible difference and that this issue, this nerve, this twitching sensation, that it will never return in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Father, I thank you for doing it, Lord. Thank you for touching them. Thank, thank you, Thank you for healing them today, Lord. In the mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. So, hope you guys receive... Anybody else? So we go back. Just somebody migraine. Somebody did with painting. Are you last two words you receive? Anybody? Anything else you felt in your spirit? Oh, well, I see Julie had respond yeah, to the, the back and the, in, yeah. the head. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless in Him. We thank you for everybody online, Lord Jesus. Anybody in their family. Father, we just bless everyone who's listening online yes, right Lord. now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. I don't fam. know if somebody is getting like a burning sensation. That's the word I. I don't know. Take, I, don't, I refuse to explain it. Yeah, but yeah, anybody who's got a kind of burning situation in your life, let me know. We just want to pray for healing in your body right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just declare healing in that area right now, yes, Lord Father. Jesus. Happy burning, Father. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Thank you Lord me. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Father. Feeling better, just my shoulder. So, Father, we release now the f your fire upon Pearl's shoulder. Yeah, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord. Every pain in her shoulder, go now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And, Father, Amen. we declare complete healing upon Pearl's Jesus, body. Okay, from the okay, crown okay, of okay, her okay, head okay. to the sole of her feet, Lord Jesus. Father, we declare that every pain, every weakness, and Amen. every issue that Pearl has been experiencing in her body. We yeah. declare that it's ending today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In your Amen. mighty name. You want to pray for them, yeah? It's a good sensation, different past in point. I just want to it's a word yeah. from God, eh? So just receive. Just pray in yeah. our ear and just pray that whatever course in it. And also we will pray for you, Nicole, about the acid reflux in your body. So Father, we release. Thank you, Lord. We lift up, Father, your son, Damien, today, Father. Yes, Lord. And Father, Whatever is the cause of this issue in his body yes, that's Lord. affecting every part of his body, this yes, burning Jesus. sensation, we declare right now, fa, complete healing upon his body in the yes, mighty name Lord. of Jesus Christ. Fa. Every burn, every burning sensation, every way that his body has been affected by this, we declare right now healing, complete healing. We declare that this burning will stop, it will cease, now in the mighty name yeah, of Jesus Lord. Christ, we declare, we declare healing complete, healing, complete body, healing in his body. From the crown of his head to the we soles of his feet, Lord. Every area of his body that has been burning, that has been affected by this burning sensation, we declare complete healing now upon his body yes, in the mighty Lord. name of Jesus Christ. Lord. Amen, amen, amen. So I pray with both you guys, Nicole and Zane, you know, just receive healing. You're going to be healed. I believe the Lord... Do affect me again in my body like that. So let's receive. Yeah? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your children. Yes, Father. And Father, we just rebuke every symptom of acid reflux right Lord, now. in their body, Lord. And Father, we declare a reversal in their body and healing to come yes, upon Father. them right now, Lord Jesus. We're going to lift up my family you now. Thank you, Lord. Anyone my who sister. has an issue right now with acid reflux, sister. Lord, we command my it to dad. reverse. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we just declare wisdom to come upon everyone who's listening, yes. who has this issue. 
Outside where have ended diet, they need to change. Father, we declare that it would happen, Lord Jesus. We declare wisdom would come, Lord Jesus. That they will learn to see well, I would stay away from this and that. And we just declare this healing yes. and this wisdom from God upon their life right now, Lord Jesus. But Father, we thank you. It could be sometimes be a tormenting thing, Lord. But we thank you, Jesus, that you took that torment upon yourself, Lord. That we could be healed. And we just declare, Lord, by your stripes, Jesus, yes, Father. we are healed. We just receive it right yeah, now, Lord. Lord. Yeah, Lord. Just receive it right now into your heart. Yes, Just rest your heart on your chest or your body and say, I'm healed in yes, Jesus' name. Father. Yes, Father. Speak to me, Lord. I'm healed. Every answer you flock, I reject it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. 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 We just declare healing right now, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. You know, in that area, I encourage you guys, allow the Lord to speak to you too. It might be sometimes, you know, like Zane, you're a young person, yeah. so it might be your eating patterns, like mm -hmm. sometimes how you eat different things, and just allow the Lord, let's change your pattern, mm -hmm. uh, doing certain things, and you'll see better, recover. Yeah? So I encourage you to just allow the wisdom of God to rest upon your, your mind and your thoughts mm -hmm. too. You know, it's a practical thing in life. You know? So. Is there anybody else who desire prayer for anything? I mean, I've seen the Lord. So asking again, migraines, mm -hmm. and also somebody. I saw like paint on a table. I don't know if it represents something to somebody, but let me know. Maybe no pain, but something, maybe a dream, something or something. I don't know. I just saw it on a table. I don't know what it means. So I just draw in. Wow. But I just know. You know what I mean? It's a word for somebody, specifically. So let me know. Um, and guys... While we're waiting, I hope you all are receiving. Yeah. I think um, you prayed for um, it's Pearl for the oh, yeah. shoulder mm -hmm. again. Let yeah. us know also yeah, how, you, let us how know your shoulder going. Yeah. You know, we're looking forward to hear from Ross. I'm well, I guess mm -hmm. your daughter and is Damian. a better sometime. And Damien, I mean, you know, we don't know what the full situation is, but we pray that you all have a report of it didn't happen again. Amen. You know, or it happening less and I see in my body recovering, mm -hmm. you know. Because it's important you all understand this, right? Healing is a word that is used like almost for natural. It means like when you cut yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You naturally say, I'm a wound yeah. healing. Yeah. And sometimes it is recover. Mm -hmm. You understand where I'm coming from, right? A miracle is like I grow out, and it's not supposed to happen, right? So mm -hmm. healing, you know, is, is also something that sometimes well, it can happen with gradually. Amen. Yeah, so healing is something where it can also actu actually gradually. Mm -hmm. Go okay. less, less, less in life, and I realize it go on, you know. And that's that's similar to what happened with me yeah. when I had my issue with my knee. The pain left the day when we prayed, but it came back the next day, and I believed and I spoke victory over my knee again. It left and it came back. The, it did that for a whole week, but now I can say eight years, nine years later, I'm healed completely. Amen. And so yeah, that's why the Bible said the word, the word of the Lord is like a sword. Mm -hmm. So it's cut it, it's do different things, it's speak the word of the Lord over your life, you know, mm -hmm. and allow it to clean up the wound, the wound in your body, mm -hmm. allow it to, you know, that's rubbing <laughs> alcohol, the word of the Lord, clean it, <laughs> yeah? But anyhow, guys, I guess nobody really had to any to those two words and link to anything, a pulse it gone, pain gone, amen. amen. So I hope you guys have a blessed week. Yeah. Um, Tuesday service as normal, Bible study, Wednesday, and Tuesday. As, so. as Pastor would have mentioned also, next week our kids ministry is starting. So if you come to our service and you have your kids, they will, you could actually carry them into the kids ministry. They'll be fed the word of God on in a way that they, yeah, they would understand from that level growing up, the food that they would need. Uh, so yeah, hope to see you all. Yeah, so if you have a, even if you have a child that you, know, you want to bring. Yeah could bring them and to kiss me sure so it's a good you know sometimes uh, you know my know a single mom and mm -hmm. they really just can't do nothing yeah, it's yeah. good they come they get they get to sit down in the wood of god yeah, and they, they, they get a little break you Correct. know the child in the room Correct. receiving from the lord i think it's a blessing i'll be honest definitely too, uh, when you have a child and they could go somewhere and learn about something yeah. about the lord you know? and you you know where they are and they get in as i said fed the word of god food the yeah. food that they need and sometimes not even just the word of god eh? just a uh, a place of joy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You understand? Definitely. A place of peace, you yeah. know, where it is, you know, you're not there and it's a madness yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, you know? yeah. and the, the worry that you, <laughs> the parent will have, you, yeah. you won't have it because you know, yeah, exactly. They're in a place where they could, yeah, yeah. Free, yeah, I'm free in that area. Because sometimes, you know, you might, a child might have an attitude and just be in there, and exactly. somebody might help and say, no, we don't play like that here, yeah. you know, and they learn something different. Yeah. But anyhow, guys, 
We done, you know. It's looking like it was rain. The rain so, is coming. The rain tap way. dancing on the roof right now. <laughs> so I don't know where you if you are raining, but you all have a great week. We out. My In guys. Jesus' name. Thank you.